Yes. It's October 2023, and today we're interviewing Ted Diamond and Gary Hill, and it's mostly about Pine Portage area and some of the logging up in that area. So Gary's going to start because he's got crucial information here um, before Pine Portage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I um, personally, I, I grew up right on the river. Uh, uh, Dad was the camp foreman at Cameron Falls for 25 years, roughly. And he had worked on every stretch of the river before and after the dam was built. So I heard a lot of different stories over the years. But the, the first thing I'd like to say is the, uh, when they first looked at the Nipigon River, they considered it... They considered it undrivable. It was just such a, a, a wild stretch of river. But uh, anyway, they, they went ahead with it. And um, you have to appreciate the scale of this project. There was no road at that time to Orient Bay or up to Auden or anywhere. Everything had to be, uh, the men had to be brought in uh, by rail and, and different things. And uh, the two large tugs, they operated on Lake Nipigon, were uh, both built down in Quebec. They were brought up on rail in sections and fabricated. So they had to build a big uh, dry dock at uh, Orion Bay and bring people in to, to assemble these boats. Eh? And they were big boats. They were uh, 18, roughly 18 men on each boat. Uh, and uh, so you'd have, uh, yeah. Uh, they operated, when they were operating, they operated right around the clock. They, they were uh, a 24 hour a, a day operation. Eh? And um, the booms that they used for rafting the wood on Lake Nipigon they were Sitka spruce. They were all uh, imported Ooh. from the West Coast. And they'd have to be all fabricated. Eh? The holes drilled. Uh, they had oak planking across the end of the boom so the, the chains wouldn't pull the, 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 the end grain out of the, right. the boom. Yeah, so, so it was a, a huge operation and all uh, strung together. So Gary, just a, was there a company, a name of a company, or was it? Uh, Abitibi. It was Abitibi. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. That yeah. Abitibi. Okay. Abitibi. Yeah, they had the, the, and Abitibi had the, the, they called it the rights to the river. So mm -hmm. in later years, when they drove um, the wood for pigeon timber, Dom Tar, etc., uh, Don Clark, there was different names that that sent wood down the river. But Abitibi was the person that did oh, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just as a side story. Um, one year, I'm not sure which company it was, they were sending 16 foot logs down the river and it was, uh, it was kind of awkward. But anyway, my dad was transported. They wanted their own men to do the job, but they were, my dad said they were great big Swedes and they'd work like crazy, he said. And then he said, all at once in the morning, everybody started to slow down. And, uh, dad was operating the boat and he'd say, well, like, like what's happening? And the guy said, coffee time. <laughs> it, was, it was coffee time. And he had never heard a coffee time, a coffee break in the morning. That was oh, the first ooh. that he had ever encountered that. Oh, eh? wow. <laughs> wow, try and get away without but that today, eh? These, these big men were working like crazy. All of us, they just started to let everybody slow down. <laughs> yeah. So, 16 foot was pretty big. Yes, really yes, big. it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Now, the original river, um, the... Below Virgin Falls, there was a like a it was it was crazy water. There was um, I can't remember. There was a, a falls at Virgin. There was a Miners Rapids, Devils Rapids, Victoria Storage or Victoria Storage, Victoria Rapids, uh, White Shoots, and then the big rapids at Pine Pine Portage. There was no falls there. It was just a series of of, of white water. Eh? Oh. Yeah. Now, to appreciate that, I'd have to show you some, some of the pictures here, but um, the, there's a couple of pictures. Okay, these are pictures my dad told me at Pine Portage. The, the water was just frothy. Oh, no. And the guys, they had these pointers, okay? They were a four-man crew, and there's two, two oarsmen and a guy at the front and the back on paddles, okay? And dad said it was... Um, uh, uh, Hand-picked crew. If we didn't think you were carrying your weight, you were out. 
They, you you got to pick your crew, eh? Gary, were they called, uh, called pointers? Yes. Yeah. 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 There, there were pointers. Yeah. yeah. Is that because it's the same at both ends? I think so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So remember, I'm just gonna. Yeah. You might be able to just get a bit of that, Kirsten. Just looking at this kind of a boat. And this is obviously the water on the other side. Now that that's an interesting picture. So they'd have to go out and like the the little jams in the middle of the, the river. Now the other interesting thing when you look at the photographs, there's not one guy that can probably swim. And there's probably not one guy wearing a life jacket. <laughs> or a helmet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey? Isn't that incredible? Yes. Like by today's standards. But nobody died on it. No, no. No, that other uh, picture, this is very interesting. The, the picture of the 20 gator shooting the rapids. I'm not sure if that might have been at Devils. And you can just, see, uh, okay, that's a, uh, where is that? Oh, you can just barely see it there. That's one of these here. Um, it's called a 20 gator. Oh, I've heard them called gators. Yeah, and... Uh, they're, okay, these boats were specially built for, um, they, they were a flat bottom, and they could um, go in the shallow water. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. They had winches uh, on them, too, on the front here, right? Well, that's, that's what I was going later, to... Later, maybe later. That's what I was going to get to, Yeah, Jack. okay. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Um, the, but, yeah, the boat, you can, you can barely hardly see it, eh, no. coming through the rapids. But then um, what they would have to do is they would have to winch, they couldn't uh, propel themselves back up through the rapids, they would have to, to actually winch themselves overland. Eh? And I had a couple of pictures oh, there of wow. the, actually uh, the, where were they? I can't quite remember where they were, but actually, oh, here's one. They'd have all this wood laying down there and then they had an, an incredibly big winch inside them and they'd just pull themselves from point to point all the way back up. Yeah. So you go down a flash, but it takes you ages to come back up again. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> but, wow. you know, I started thinking about it after, like just the, the scale of getting fuel and food. Because I think they had a, like before Pine, they'd have a drive camp at Devils. Now, I don't think it was a very big camp. They'd have a camp at Virgin Falls. They'd have a camp at, they would have had four camps there for sure. Besides uh, the ones at this end of the river, eh? And the uh, ones at Orient Bay. Yes, and they all had to be supplied, eh? Uh, fuel mm -hmm. and uh, uh, food, you know, well, you have to feed those men. Clothes. Yes, yeah, and all that stuff had to be shuttled up and down the river, eh? And that was all brought by boat and by rail? Or was I'm assuming at that part. Now, Dad they had one picture of a truck being towed up the river on a barge. Uh, I'm not sure where I can find that, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, there's there's a barge. I'm not sure if it was being towed to Alexander or where it was, but there was actually an old, uh, like a primitive truck oh, <laughs> on the wow. barge, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're right, it's the scale of the whole To do it at that thing. time. Okay, yeah. what's, the, what's the era? 19 what? Um, 30, or... I think they started the river drive in 39, 1939, yeah. And that was the year the war broke out. So I'm even curious how they had, if there was a man, like my dad, he, he left the river, he went into the war, he, or he, yeah, so he en enlisted. So he was gone for five years, so, so yeah. Did he go back after? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like he actually timber crews at the other end of Lake Nipigon, uh, they went in from the, the CN main line, like from Auden, okay. and spent the whole winter in a, in a tent, oh uh, my. Timber, timber cruising that area. Yeah. I forgot about Auden across the, the top of there. Yes, yeah, that was so, another access. So the point. rail was there a long time. Yes. And very convenient that the rail And, 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 and the, the spur line that came down here, too, because they had to have that to build Cameron Falls, see? Eh? Oh, right. Yeah. That, right. Because you've CN. talked. Yes. CN, yeah. yeah. And you've talked before about that spur line that went up. Yeah. People try to find that all the time. They're always looking for that. I rode on it a couple times coming from Long Lock down to Nipigon. Yes. Yeah. 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 Interesting, yeah. right? And yeah. then another, another interesting story. Uh, my father talked about bringing a team of horses from Thunder Bay. And he said the Mackenzie Inn was an overnight stop, 
Uh, Dorian was an overnight stop. You'd put the horses out back and take a room and have supper. The, I think the Red Rock Inn. And then somehow the horses ended up on a barge and got towed to the other end of Lake Nipigon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I don't know, that, that was probably, well, maybe, probably before the war, because, like, after the, the war, uh, construction on Pine began, and that might even be a good time to start. Now, Pine Portage, they had to actually um, stop the river drive for mm -hmm. a year, I'm not sure, a year or two, because of the construction. And what was really um, interesting is the, the big camp, they had at um, Pine Portage was uh, built back in the bush before the water came up. <laughs> so there, there was this big camp and a dock. <laughs> and, no, and, you know, and, and my dad said the old timers, they said, oh, they couldn't, they couldn't fathom that, that they, <laughs> that they would get it right. And when they flooded Pine, the water came up to the top of the dock and everything was just fine. Amazing engineers, eh? Yes, yeah. Amazing engineers. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. No, I, what years, what year was Pine built then? Uh, pardon? Pine? What year for Pine? It was after the war when it started, yeah. yeah. Just for, after 45 anyway. Okay. Yeah. And that's probably when the main um, road would have been uh, built into Cameron and then up to Pine. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Because I just... You must have known Ada Stanley. Yes. Well, I just remember her telling me stories of walking that rail line yes. into town on the weekends yeah. so they could go to the bar or socialize. And I remember her telling me there was no road and they walked back and forth on that rail line yeah. in, into Cameron. And when the first cars started out, they used the, the right away of the power line. Eh? Nick, yeah. Nick used what I talked about yeah. coming oh. down, the, driving on the power line. Eh? Um, yeah. Oh. We were at Cameron one day, and these uh, older ladies come in, and they had grown up in Cameron Falls, and I guess they had a streets in Cameron. There was no road in or out, but they had a car there. And she said when they left Cameron, she said everything they owned was put on a, a box car, including their car, <laughs> and they moved to southern Ontario. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. That was right, pretty, pretty big. Uh, they had a little... St <coughs> Excuse me, little uh, station right there at Cameron too. Yeah. 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 Like a place where you can get a catch the plane or plane. Uh, the train. Oh the train. Yeah. Yeah. Grab a ticket and yeah. 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 So would it would a passenger train have gone by or was this would they have been getting yeah, on? There, a, there was a passenger train a run. Well I I was on it from Lawlack to Nip, to Thunder Bay. And okay. And where okay. it come from I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I would only assume it was freight trains that were going there. I wasn't thinking that there would be a passenger train. I yeah. think, would that spur line, um, would that start in Geraldton or Nikina? Well, Nikina and probably. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. But it I'm probably thinking. basically built for the hall in the Pope. Yeah. The, 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 the truck. Right, yeah. right. Now, so it was there a long time, the rail line. No, the the River Drive, an interesting uh, statistic is they they counted. Okay. They they counted on 10% loss. So Ooh. one out of 10 logs would end up on the bottom of the lake or lost. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Wow. You, you talk about that on Lake, lake Nipping, and there's still the odd stick we'd find laying on the bottom. Some of them were only. Uh, four feet long, and then you went into the 16 foot legs, legs there too. Yeah. In fact, what you're talking about the big booms they had for hauling these down the lake and all that. Yeah. There's one up, just up from where my camp is, at, at uh, just up from my camp anyway. And uh, it's well, it's as big around as this table. Yes. That, yeah. that yeah. boom, it, that's it, what they used. Well, yeah. remember they had a couple in front of the old museum yeah. before the fire. They had a couple of because I got my class sitting on those log booms, and I thought they had one at the, by the Legion one time. But I always felt they should have kept a couple of those because they were history yeah. for people to look at them. And that's why when you mentioned that piece of wood there, I could remember seeing that. The ca capping on the yeah end. Yes. on those yeah. I could remember seeing that on there. But it's I don't know, it's amazing to bring that. Oh, 
as you say, I can't get over when I think about it, the operation of bringing yeah. all that stuff from BC. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, putting yeah. it all together. And, yeah. 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 And engineers and builders, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the camp at uh, Cameron, they had a bunkhouse for 40 men. Like that, that's, that's a lot of guys that had to be, and then they had a, a kitchen, a, la a laundry building where they did all the laundry for the Because Mae Turner worked in the kitchen, she told me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think she was <laughs> one of the cooks there. Yeah, Mae and... May and Ada yep. were together, yes. but I remember May was two, two of the two women. I can't yep. remember the other woman's name. Yeah, Ada Stanley. Hey, Ada yeah. Stanley. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the, they had no refrigeration, so all the the meat was uh, I, what they called it, but it was like a gazebo built up on steps with it was all screened in, and the, like a hind quarter of beef or whatever would be hung on hooks inside this, and they had it all screened so the flies couldn't enter. Wow. But uh, my my dad must have shot many many uh, bear over the year because they were always they were always battling with the bears. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> There's one of those meat houses still up up at. Uh, uh, Orient Bay at uh, Cubby Ducks place there, okay. where the, they had their camp. Yeah. There's still one of those meat houses there. Yeah. Also, oh, Cubby Ducks area was one of the camp areas. That was a that, big one for Abitibi. That was a big one there for Abitibi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And then see, like when the the tugs were uh, hauling on Lake Nipigon, they had a boat at Orient Bay called the Ogama, and they would run supplies and mail out to the. Out, out to the boat, eh? oh. it was kind of a shuttle s right, service, right. Eh? or maybe okay. s somebody got sick or whatever, you'd have to get them in, but yeah. So I wonder... What was the big boat called that, that towed? Uh, Tug Orient Bay and Tug Lake Nipigan, I think the two Tug Lake Nipigan. Yeah. That was a big one, that towed the... Yes, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the Where do you think they got a lot of the men from to come and work on those? Well, I was thinking about that this morning. There was a a large representation of New Brunswick. Oh. Yeah, there's uh, Muches, the Hills, the, I'm trying to think of all, Jardines. Uh, That's why you people all, all knew each other yeah. years ago. Leeches. Matchets coming. Matchets. <laughs> well, yeah, my, my dad and uh, Bob would have been cousins, and he was a cousin with uh, Howard Leach, and then oh. there was three or four leeches came up, uh, uh, a handful of matchets. Oh, okay. So yeah, and what happened is they had big families, and then uh, they went through hard times down there. They're logging, and and there was there was no work down there. Right. And so when the, you know people came up here and there was work, they they, they sent letters home. And, right. Yeah. So did you get Europeans too? Uh, I don't know. I'm just. Wondering, because later you hear the thin people worked in the bush, but maybe not on the logging. Uh, not as much on the logging. There would probably would have been uh, some fellas, but the names I'm familiar with, and then it depends what period also. Right. No, the other thing is it was, um, like say at Cameron and... Okay. Part, We're going to stop there then, Kristen, and then we'll start again, because she's going to... This camera is odd gear. Okay, so continue now then. Where was I? Uh, oh, uh, the work was, um, a lot of work was seasonal, like at Cameron. Like, oh, of course. Yeah, so the guys, what would happen is a lot of people cut in the bush in the winter, and then they come home to their subsistence farm. Uh, you know, people had those, everybody had a, like a farm and a couple cows and chickens and, right. and, a, and a small plot of land back in those days. Yeah, so there was it was like winter work cutting, but um, some people went then from the cutting and then onto the river. Okay. Yeah, they worked full time then. Okay. Yeah. yeah so okay. now, say at Cameron and Pine, it was very labor intensive to put the wood through the log chutes at the dam. So they had a lot of. Um, this is at Pine Dam now. Pine. Cameron and, and Alexander. Okay, all three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they, you know, there'd be. I think everybody in Nipigon here worked as a summer student at one time on the river somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they'd, you know, hire staff. But. Now the actual. No. Uh, once Pine was built, it was actually kind of a complicated um, procedure. They had to, when the big tug brought the logs into the bottom of Lake Nipigon to the mouth of the river. 
he he couldn't open up the raft of wood because it was too shallow. So that's the crew from Virgin Falls would go up and split the raft, okay? Then the wood would enter into the river or they would give it a push and then they would, the big boat would take the towing set, they called it, the towing booms, drag them up the lake and then the other crew would have to pull the safety boom across, across the lake so then it's into the system, into the river, eh? right? And uh, it, it got down to the top of Foregon Lake and they had to do it all over again. They had to, because they had to raft it from there. And the rafting was interesting. Okay, now on Lake Nipigon, the, the rafts would be about from five to 8,000 cords of wood. And it was wrapped so tight that you could actually walk across the, the there'd be three and four sticks deep. I've seen they, pictures of that. Yeah. Walking. And it was quite a job actually to open. We had to winch and to, to get enough together. slack to get the, 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 the pin out of the, the shackle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you mean when they did that, there's only one or two places where the shackle is and they have to be able to get to that yeah. to open it. Well, well, each, you could open it anywhere. Oh, anywhere. Any, okay. any set of booms was okay. uh, together with a, with a, the big chain and a okay. shackle. But the only problem was the shackle had a nail through it, so it wouldn't. Uh, right. So you had to, you were on, your arms were under the water and, you're, and it's cold and you had to yeah. you know, knock this nail out. <laughs> yeah. And I remember when I first came here, there was a lot of bit Bob Batchets and I remember a guy from Red Rock walking across it. I remember watching that. And, and, yeah, so that's right. It yeah. got tight in there. But I'm sure there was days when somebody got caught in there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Don't you think somebody ever got their feet caught or fell on those? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. Don't think so. Eh? There wasn't too much of um, the, like, in different river drives where the guys actually walk the logs and all that. That, that never really happened oh, okay. on the Nipigon River. They they would walk, they could walk the boom, though, like right. you said, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, a lot of boats involved in this too then. Yes. Lots of bug tugs, I mean, and small boats then involved in it. Yeah, no, like above, <laughs> when they got the, uh, on Forgan Lake, there would be the, there'd be two boats that, uh, one pulling the raft of wood and one pushing it. Now the rafts weren't as big on, because uh, the lake was narrow. And if you got the wrong wind, the raft mm -hmm. would get hung up on an island or on a point or something like that. So they had a, a tug at the front pulling and a tug pushing. And what they could do is they could roll. If they hit, hit, hit the, if it was getting in, out of control, they could kind of roll, roll it yeah, yeah. into position. Eh? Wow. Yeah. And then if they couldn't get the, the raft of wood um, down to the dam in one shift, well, they would tie it off. They had different mooring uh, rock anchors, okay. eye bolts in the in the rock. Yeah, they would tie off to it. I think I think they had uh, glance booms along the way, and some of the bases there. Then they'd put a what they call a glance boom to keep the wood going in in the stream there. Yep, and then a lot. Well, yeah, there was two parts to that story, Ted, because when they they didn't they didn't do anything with the wood. They just uh, slashed above Pine Portage, and when they flooded, all this dead wood came up and they what they did is they rounded it up they pulled it pulled it into those back bays and then they put a glance boom or yeah, boom right. across it oh. but then to keep them in but the booms got old and they weren't maintained and, then, and that stuff started drifting down to the power hose <laughs> plugging up the trash racks yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. there's still a pile of that there one bay up there that we used to go up there and we could hunt there but you could walk walk on top of that until you got to shore. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well. I remember going to the girl Boy Scout camp up at Pine, yep. and I remember us going in canoes, and all you could see was all the logs. Oh, yeah. On, on the, underneath the water, because the water's so clear, and you could see where they cut off all the stumps and everything. I remember that was pretty interesting to, to float over top of all of that. Yeah. So, so they'd get, the, the, like I said, they were smaller rafts on, on Forgan, or Lake Hanna, whatever you want to call it. It was an eight, with a good wind, it took eight hours to, to tow a raft uh, down. Eight hours. Eight hours. So it, the, it was actually a pretty easy job. You'd go up in the morning, and if the raft was ready to go, you'd hook on, and it was an eight hour, just one guy on the wheel, and the other, you had a, an engineer and a logman. Uh, 
and it was basically eight hours of uh, suntan. Well, tell me the places where they put spilled the wood into the lake. Ah, uh, that would have occurred in Humboldt Bay and, oh. and on Babaka Bay. Oh. They drove both rivers at one time. Oh. In later years, I think they truck trucked the wood out onto the. Uh, out onto the ice. ice. Eh? Yeah, <clears throat> there was quite a few of the rivers co running into Lake Nipigon that had wood go down to okay. Lake Natamigan River. Quite a few of the smaller rivers. Yes, yeah. and then they'd they'd catch it before it went out into Lake Nipigon and put it into a boom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now that would have been Domtar. Uh, or, or I guess there's all different companies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. all different companies. Yeah. yeah. Was, okay. Okay. I just thought there must have been lots of places where they were putting wood into the lake. Yeah. To get that much yes. going down there. And there was so much wood that my f father said one year they couldn't get it all down the river. They had at East Arm, he said they had East Arm right full of wood and then boomed off ready for next spring. Yeah, yeah they, they had so much wood. Wow. So it gets down the river, comes all the way down past Nipigon, out into the lake, and then. It was, there would be another set of tugs that would tow it to Thunder Bay. Now that part of the River Drive I'm not I'm familiar not, with okay. much at all. Mostly to Thunder Bay. None of it went to the States. No? Nope. Yeah, well they used to they used to have some uh, a big boat come in from the States and they would load it right out in front of Red Rock there in the bay and load the wood onto this truck on the truck onto the boat. And apparently it went to Chicago. Oh okay. and then the other stuff went into the Red Rock Mill. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have a a contact on my email from McGrath from the Scriber area and every once in a while he'll send me little articles and it's about all of the tugboats and the and the wood and some of the storms they got involved in and it's pretty interesting to see how much yeah. how much impact that had because they were articles from the Chicago Tribune that were about Nipigan and Lake Nipigan and the wood up here and I just thought it was interesting that it Come, was that important, yeah. really, that it made the Chicago um, paper. The wind was, I always tell this story, but the wind was everything. Mm. When, when Dad woke up in the morning, he stepped outside. And if it, there was a fair wind and a headwind. Yeah. <laughs> if the wind was out of the north, that was a fair wind. The wood was moving. Yeah. And if it was a south wind, he, he would be, he would be, I'm not sure what you unsettled. Agitated. <laughs> Agitated. <laughs> because there'd be pressure on to get this wood down the river, but you can't fight the wind. Right. Okay. Yeah. They couldn't tow those rafts against the wind. And a lot of time, even in the storages where you cut a raft out, the wood, wood would it would hold up the river. It wouldn't come down. Right. Eh? Yeah. Right. And then to get it through the log chutes, you needed the cooperation of, of, yeah. of the wind also. Eh? <coughs> yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. So if you got a Long stretch of south wind. Oh. <laughs> yeah, long day. Well, the boats, the boats helped it go through into the log chutes and that, yeah. that pine yeah. and Cameron Falls and Alexander, actually. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> they would just uh, help it along there. They had a catwalk there, and there'd be guys with pipe poles making sure it keeps going. Yeah. 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 And there was two problems. Like, number one, sometimes the wood wouldn't come down to the log chute. And then sometimes it would come in too heavy. That's it, right. If it come in too hard, it would jam up. It, mm -hmm. it would plug up at the mouth. Eh? And, that, and that's why they had the guys on the on the walkway there uh, with pipe poles to keep her, yeah. keep her going. And log jam yeah. is a very familiar expression, isn't it? Yeah. Log jam. Yeah. 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 And then, um, uh, they, and then they had they come up with the flow developers. See, eh? they're the they're like a little electric submarine that oh, yeah. they, they would run them and then they so actually put the you know, guys out of work eh? oh. they, so it created a current they tie, tie these up to the side of the, the catwalks and, uh, yep. and they had uh, electricity running under them and they, they created a current uh, oh. to help the, the, the wood through the dam so wow. then they didn't need as, as many guys on pike poles eh? yeah. Right. yeah wow so. interesting how people what's that the Invention is the mother of all needs, or something like that. <laughs> necessity, but yeah, necessity, eh? Yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. To be able to do that. Yeah, yeah Carol, uh, uh, Pine Porridge—they had one of those sub, as you call them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, work, I worked one, one or two summers there at the, the log So there's I, three, three dams. Yep. What's the order of them being built? Uh, Cameron, Alexander, and then Pine. Okay, so Cameron was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one that amazes me when I go in there. And how could engineers have that's an amazing job that many years. That's 100 years ago now, isn't it, Cameron? Yeah. 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 And and it's still running. And it's oh, amazing. But they had good electricians there then. <laughs> he was an electrician. <laughs> Not 100 years ago. <laughs> so you grew up automatically knowing you were going to work for hydro. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I would imagine lots of people who then grew up there, but I mean, your dad lived in Cameron later. Did he work for Hydro? No. Nope. Oh, he just worked for the Abitibi. Wow, yeah. Abitibi yeah. all that time. Yeah. So then down on this end, I, I know the names Much, Matchett, and Johnny All. Okay. Uh, I I Much was actually the supervisor of the whole river. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And Bob Matchett just run the camp here at, at right. Lake Helen. Yeah. Oh, that I see. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what uh, his job was either. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was yeah. There. okay. So lots of names are familiar, that's yeah. for sure, but yeah. uh, big, big operations for sure. Yeah. And then I can't remember now, you got the date when the last river drive went down? 73. 73. Yeah. And started in? 39. 39. But at the end, it was a very um, s small operation. There was just a little bit of wood coming down. Yeah. 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 It was all... Maybe it was all over in one month. And, mm. Okay. Um, now the other thing that was interesting, in the, when I when I was working around the river, um, Domtar and Nipigon or Abitibi were both using the river. So what they would do is they would, I can't remember the order. If they drove half of Domtar's wood first, because they they required one of the mills needed wood, so they'd drive half their wood, then all the other companies would. And then the other half. So you had to clean the whole river out, right from top to bottom. Like the Domtar painted their logs one color, Abitibi painted their logs the other color. So you had to start right from Virgin Falls. And if you were a young guy, you ended up on the on the. They, it was beach combing, yeah, but it was, we called it the rear. Okay? Yeah, it's rearing. Rearing, yeah. yeah. And so you would have to basically uh, uh, you do a lot of walking and picking the. The, the logs off the, sh the shore and yeah wow. they, what they did is they had uh, a boat on each side of the river and s uh, with a boom across and then they, they, you pick the wood off and they just kept dragging the boom down sometimes the current would get too strong and they would make a bag and, and so they'd have to pull it up and just get some slack eh? and then it keep coming down so, so when you did the beach combing then they had to sort it by color no because oh. Domtar was done they took all every stick of wood that came down oh, would have been theirs. Okay. They cleaned it right out. Okay. Now the other thing about the beach combing, they could only beach comb Abitibi could only I think it was a half a mile or a quarter mile from their storage. And if say the wood was further than that, then the beachcomber like uh, Leo Lesby oh, or right. Jack Dampier, oh, yeah. he would have the rights to it. But Abitibi only had the the rights to I think it was a quarter, maybe a half mile from each end of the, their story, eh? yeah. Billy Johnson did beach combing too because I, I remember yes. that famous picture of his truck with the big logs on it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that was quite an opera. Then they had what they called a dry rear or a wet rear because back in those days uh, the river fluctuated so much, okay? So here's what happened. You get a, the water would be high and, and say down around Par Machine and places like that, the wood would be back in the bush <laughs> and then they would drop the water <laughs> and when the rear came along well they'd have to drag all that wood out of the you know down the mud yeah. and yeah. yeah so it's quite an operation then some years the water was was perfect right right because you have to remember too that the river it, it, when i grew up uh there was fluctuations in the river there was no generation on Sunday. The mills were all shut down. They didn't run. And you could, we'd be out picking up the fish hooks in front of Alexander or the, uh, even fish in the pools. Eh? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the, the, the river, was, they just idled in, oh, on a Sunday. Day. Oh my. Yeah, and then they went to, you know, work in seven right, days a week. Right, yeah. right. 
just uh, so so big an operation now that you have given us all that information. It's yeah. so once the road came to Cameron, then it must have made a big difference. Yes, yeah, cause, yeah. The, the people and supplies and fuel and everything could come in by truck. Could then come yeah. by truck. Yeah, yeah, and the same with Highway Eleven. Yeah. Up to Orient Bay, then would have made a big difference. Yeah. <coughs> Joey Reno used to plow that out when they had a bad storm with a tractor from Cameron Falls to get it open for out to the highway. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah, I didn't even think about the snow in the winter operation then. Yeah. So, winter operation was pretty nil. There was nothing on the river on the in river. the winter. Yeah. Okay. Um, they, my dad worked, uh, what they would do is they would s service the, the, the booms on the river. So like a lot of, they would, um, if the booms were getting wore out, they would, uh, he, he, he was usually good till sometime in January or February, uh, refitting the booms, oh, okay. eh? Yeah. they get wore, so they'd cut the ends off, redrill them, and recap them, eh? Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they'd I can remember going to Steamboat Bay in the wintertime just to take pictures of all that wood on the ice. On the ice, yeah. Waiting for spring to come. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty interesting for me because I didn't know anything about it, but I can remember that every winter for several years you'd see Steamboat Bay just full <coughs> of I think they had wood. Lake Helens kind of split in half. I'm not quite sure. Like all Domtar's wood was on oh, in held in storage on one side there. Eh? Yeah, he used to store it right in front of the church. Two minutes. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, that's one of the famous pictures, yeah. too, yeah. is of that boom in front yeah. of the church yeah. as one of the last yeah. ones. Now, what, yeah. what is interesting is, is going through a raft of wood in one of the old tugs. You want to get a, you don't want to have a headache or a hand over, hangover <laughs> because it was just bang, 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 and then I'm going for about four or five miles of that, <laughs> plowing through the wood. Anyway. <laughs> That's another 20 minutes gone, so Kirsten, that's good. The, there was like even, um, I don't remember my father telling me about sometimes they would be um, pulling a chain of logs up the river, but sometimes the current would be up too strong and would start to pull the boat backwards. And he said they had to have an ax right there to cut the line because it, if it started pulling backwards, it would sink the boat, eh? the oh. boat would plow in, eh? like that. Wow. Eh? Um, now, what was the, like at Lake Jesse, that was interesting. Um, every stick of wood that come down Lake Jesse was winched. They didn't have a, the Utan was the boat they, they operated on Lake Jesse, and it had a, a huge winch in it, and everything was winched from one point to another point, like that, mm. yeah. I think the, the one, <coughs> one boat, I think it was a Wabanash when they, they sold it, or when the river drive was over. My dad said it had a mile of 7 eighths cable on it. Oh. Yeah, like it was incredible how much. And those 20 gators. Sir. No, I, had, anyway, I had one more story. Gary's got a picture album full <laughs> of pictures, and I would asked him where they were, and he said how they were taken again. Just relate that. Your dad. Oh, oh um. My, my father shuttled the hydro f photographer uh, up and down the river above Pine Portage. Uh, uh, they were taking pictures, so he, he had quite a collection of, of right. pictures at right. that time. Yeah. Okay, so you're uh, one more story. And, and, and white shoots, I, I don't know if there's any pictures around of white shoots. It was supposed to be quite incredible because basically the river s uh, slammed into a rock wall and then it kind of split. There was like a, a back channel. Like just a, a like a lagoon or whatever, eh? But it, and then and then it flowed down. So whereabouts is White Shoot? Just above Pine Portage. Oh, okay. Yeah, just yeah. just about a yeah. quarter of a mile up from the dam, okay. I think, yeah. roughly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, uh, the, the other story I was going to tell you. Dad was um, out camping at, at Sibley Park, and the strong wind come up, and of course he was walk on the floor and he finally he told mom we got to head home so he got back and the safety booms or the glance booms that ted was talking about uh, uh, above cameron falls powerhouse had broken and all the wood had, had come right in on the powerhouse so 
my father basically they had to go in and tell the operator that he had to shut down his power house because if they don't all the, the woods would get uh, pulled down into the trash racks and there it would choke off the wow. the machines anyway so they had to shut the power house down and then he made a a, a sweep in with the booms and they they pulled her out eh? <laughs> yeah. Always something, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. And then, for sure. And every time you operated the the log chutes, you had to report to hydro, like how how high or how much water was going through. Right. Yeah, right. They, had, they had to know that for their calculations, eh? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So. so the when you said Cameron was built first, was then that the first lot of power lines that came down? Yes. And then. Every time they built, did they add more power lines? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Big, big operation. Oh. Yeah. And now, the last two, three years, they've been replacing lots on that Cameron Falls Road. And I, Herman always says, I wonder if those original ones that they're replacing, or have they been replaced many times? Well, they've been spotty. Replaced the ones that needed it. Yeah. And Otherwise, they they put in pretty all new ones nowadays. In yeah. fact, but I, even the feet they put in so many new feet yeah. there this last I've couple of years. I noticed with hydro now that they are replacing just about everything with new stuff. Even the towers yeah. they're replacing. Yeah. yeah, pretty interesting to think how much went up there, and it all started with a river drive <laughs> <laughs> years and years ago. Interesting. Okay, Ted, you got anything you were thinking of when you were? Uh, no. Well, I think you covered you. You covered the. You all. You had a place right at uh, at Cameron Falls or the camp there. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah there's yeah. a big, big camp. At that Cameron. was a big camp there. That's yeah. where the Boy Scout camps oh, that was took a, off. Oh, that was Pine Portage. Uh, Pine Portage, I mean, yeah. 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 Pine Portage. Yeah. Well, that was a camp there. Yeah. 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 Because that one building was from the from the uh, um, log camp. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And the same as the girl guide camp at Polly Lake was originally Bill Hurd worked there because okay. he had the horses there, he told me. I I always wished I could have interviewed him because he, he had lots of stories about the uh, the camp at Polly Lake, that great big building. Well, there was were several right? buildings at the guide camp that oh, were that. all to do with, uh, yeah. and that was on Polly Lake. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah. must have had wood come yeah. either back up and yeah. down again or something, but I know he had the horses, he told me there. Wow. Yeah. And I remember camping at um, where Jesse goes into the river. They had a big, must have had a bush camp in there because Lynn and I bottle dug and found lots of bottles in that area. There's still a little bumpy road that goes down and it's just before um, at, when you go up Jesse and just before it enters the river with the great big hills on the side. Yeah, and they, they actually had it like right out at the, where the river comes in, there was actually a camp there. They called it the the Bell Boom Camp. Okay. So that's where they would have uh, uh, caught the logs before they oh, okay. uh, made the raft. I think um, there. I do remember something where the, where the camps where the people are camping there. I remember they. It's like they might have had um, booms piled up on shore there. Oh. They they may have pulled them out there at one time. I'm not sure. Okay. I, got, I I remember going to the. I was only young, but there was a building, like the, the Belboom Camp. It was just a, like a, like a s small camp. It was like it wasn't a, a, a cookhouse and a bunkhouse. I think it was all right. in one, one right. under one roof type of thing. But yeah. But I just remember Lynn and I bottle digging in there and amazed at how far back from the river we were finding bottles. But I don't know if you ever knew that eggshells just don't deteriorate. And we were digging, and there was eggshells in there. And that would have been from, I don't know what era of camp, but every time there's a hill, that's where you found the bottles because the, <laughs> the garbage went over the hills. So we, on, on the Fraser Lake Road, the same thing. Yep. We, we did lots of bottle digging on those places where the camps were. Lucky, that's always interesting. Lucky just dumped over a hill. Most of it was dumped in the lakes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet. But it's interesting. When, that's how I knew about some of the... There was a couple on Fraser Lake, I guess, uh, uh, camps, but uh, yeah. Don Martin knew there was one at the far end there. Oh, yeah. There but was one at Bass Lake. Oh, at Bass Lake, right. Yeah. Right. How they drove that creek, I don't know, but like you said, they would, 
they would back the water up and then f and flush, flush it all up. But it was only, I think, a four-foot four wood they would yeah, drive on. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Probably Fraser Creek would have been four-foot. I guess they started with four-foot because I, that was all they could handle mostly. It had to be handled by hand a lot, a lot of the long. Yeah. So then they went to 16 when they started to get machinery yeah. in that. Okay, okay. Lots of, lots of employees over that many years from the bush cutters to the... Log drives. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and lots of changes, eh? Because all of the originally be all like there'd be no power saws, it'd be all and I, yeah. sweet saw. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Sweet saws and axes. And so Nipigan has a very interesting history um, of logging and oh, yeah. hydro together. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very important in, in Ontario and, and Nipigan. But Johnny Old's supposed to have a, a report on the Nipigon River on towing and that. Oh yeah. Uh, that's what I heard. I we know. interviewed him, so it might have had something. Oh, I don't did? know. Yeah. I don't know if we yeah. did him or not. Because he, he had a lot of a lot of experience on right on the logs dumped there, where they come from and yes, stuff right, like that. right, right. <clears throat> that's why we have to record it now because it's going to disappear fast. Yeah. Anyway, well, I was you. never on the log on the river here, but I had I was I was a on the river drive at Long Lake. Okay. Driving the wood from Long Lake down to Terrace Bay. Yeah. Oh, I was on that for two summers. Oh, were you? Driving wood. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I didn't know now Long Lake goes into where? Right up to Long Lake. Right, right. But Long Lake comes down this way? No, no. Goes right down into Terrace Bay. Oh, to Terrace Bay. The yeah. water from there, the hydro diverted the water from running north and it runs all, they made canals down through there and right through, and then it run into Terrace Bay for the pulp mill there. Oh. And that's the river drive I was on oh, okay. for two summers. Okay. Yeah. There we are, another part then. That's besides the point. No, but that's part of it. That's yeah. the whole still part of, of the logging era yeah. then, Ted, from there. Yeah. 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 That's why when I got come back here, I started to explore some of these areas, and I, boy, I remember seeing that stuff. I remember that. And, yeah. 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 Okay. I didn't even realize it would have come down um, that way to, to Terrace Bay. Hmm. Anyway, that's really that's good. interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, and I know a good job. people <laughs> are going to be interested in, in, in listening to this interview, that's for sure. Thanks, Kirsten.